So what we're gonna try to do here is we got a four liter and an FJ Cruiser on Toyota. And we're gonna replace the knock sensors, which if you look it up book time is a 20 hour job. You have to pull the head off, you gotta pull the timing chain off the front. And we're gonna try to pull the intake and cut some of the bands for the coolant tubes and pull them out so you don't have to spend 20 hours to put knock sensors in this and tear the motor halfway apart. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the shields off the bottom. And I got a, a big jug, but I know I'll have to drain the antifreeze, so I'm gonna go ahead and drain it to the jug and try to save the antifreeze so you don't have to put any antifreeze in if it still tests good. And then basically we're gonna pull the upper and the lower intake out. And then once we get down in there, we can see where we're going from there. Perfect. intake which is just these bolts right here and there's a bracket on this side and then we'll take the upper intake off and then we can get the rest of the harness loose from underneath it and then we can start pulling the lower intake If you're going to do this job and you really want to have all the parts ahead, then go ahead and get your upper plenum gaskets, your lower intake gaskets, the harness, because a bunch of times rats will get up in here and build a nest up underneath these intakes and they'll mess up the harness. And then if it was me, I'd go ahead and do both knock sensors. We went to Rock Auto and bought both ours. They're Belk Ernley knock sensors, so it's a little bit cheaper, but everything else we just got from Toyota. Toyota's knock sensors was about 170 bucks a piece, so we went with the cheaper route. We didn't go with the cheapest ones we could find, but we went with the cheapest name brands we could get. All right, we got our wiring harness from Toyota. Here's the part number if you need it for the wiring harness. These are our lower intake gaskets, and then our upper plenum gasket. We just got all that from Toyota. And then these we got off Rock Auto because it's a little bit cheaper than the Toyota price. We got two of them just to go ahead and replace both.
just little squeeze clips. Easily push them out a little bit, squeeze them together. Then you pull them out. As you can see, squeeze it and it releases it. You can push in sometimes because it'll hang up if you try to squeeze it while you're pulling on it. You push in a little bit and squeeze it and then slide it off. It'll come off. Take my air blower and lightly blow the dust and stuff out from around the lower intake. That's when you pull this off, you don't get a lot of dirt and debris going down inside the cylinder head, tearing stuff up. Then you really will have to take the head off. What they're doing is they're pulling this off. And this tube runs around underneath this head is why you can't get the knock sensors out without pulling this head because that's where this tube attaches to. But what we're going to do is cut these bands right here to this big tube and unbolt this and slide it off and get the big tube out and then we'll be able to reach both knock sensors to replace them. Put pa painter's tape. Damn, that got dirty. Cross my intake here. This is when I go to cutting these bands to get that tube out. Just swinging the metal in to my intake. Perfect. 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 So we did. So we took our air saw. Come over and see. And this tube just goes inside. It's got an O-ring on each side. Pushes into this, and this other tube runs over underneath this head. And they want you to remove the head so you can get these tubes out together to get the knock sensors underneath here. So what I did is I took my air saw and I just cut those two bands right in between here to separate this pipe from this pipe. There's a band here and there's a band here. Then we can take this pipe out and we'll be able to reach underneath here and get both of these knock sensors out without having to take this head off. And then when we go back together, I got some hose clamps and we'll just clamp the two pipes back together and it'll be good to go.
knock sensors out, which I can't do with that B-Ratchet. Take both the knock sensors out. Get the homes out and get up in here. in here but right back here is a knock sensor plug you can see the harness right here you unplug it from the back of the head right there and then there's a little clip that stands at the back of the bracket in there you gotta pop it loose and there's another clip right here underneath this coolant passage you gotta pop loose Both knock sensors and the harness. This is usually what happens with these knock sensors. These wires get chewed in by rodents and they'll get in there and usually if they chew all the way through it, it'll throw a fault code. That's usually what you get the fault code for. The bank two sensor. Got the knock sensors torqued back down to the heads. Fish the new harness back through here.
When you take this lower intake off, the only bolts you need to take out is the 12 millimeter ones. There's some torques with little holes in the middle that hold this two piece together, and you don't have to take them out. There's a couple of them running around through here, but the ones like that, you don't have to take out, just the ones that are 12 millimeters. Perfect.
to see where it's at in my neck. I reckon that concludes the video. She's back together. But it runs or not, nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.